one, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the Y and Y, Y and Y, Y and Y. Welcome to the Y and Y on the internet. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Alicia and welcome to our Youth and Young Adult Service here at Fairy Church of Christ. Um, it's an honour to be with you guys today. Um, normally we start off these services um, with asking you guys a bunch of questions. Obviously it's a bit tricky to do that today, so instead I thought I would play you guys a song and you can guess what the song is. I've recently taken up the keyboard again as of an hour ago, um, so I hope you can guess what the song is. Yes, the Muffin Man, you were in fact correct. Congratulations. Great job. Alright, so um, these Youth and Young Adult Services, they're going to be on every third Sunday of the month like normal. Um, so yeah, stick around on social media um, to find out more information about those. Our life groups are still meeting on Thursdays, fortnightly. The next one is on the 23rd of April. Um, so we do those on Zoom. Um, we were going through the Book of Acts last week. I think it still acts, so you guys should come along for that. Um, we also stream our Sunday morning services on Zoom as well. So, um, yeah, we just all come together and we do some worship and then we stream the services and then we chill out afterwards. So um, I'd really recommend you guys come along to that as well. If the reason you haven't been coming along is because of, like, Zoom issues or internet issues or something to do with just, like, internet technology problems, um, please do let Michaela know because um, we're going to find a way to try and help you guys with that. Um, so, yeah, also, if or if you don't want to contact Michaela, you should want to, but otherwise our other young adult leaders are people like Jess and Emily and Nick and Sophie and Jenny, so I hope I'm not forgetting anyone there. Uh, we also, on the girl screens right now, something to do with tithing. Well, not something. The details for tithing are going to be on your screen. Um, so if you regularly attend Berwick and you would normally give, um, please continue to do so. Um, obviously, if you don't go to Berwick um, all the time, um, please do not feel obligated to give. Um, lastly, our Search to Find courses are currently running online as well. Um, so if you would like some more information about that, please do contact um, Michaela. So now I have the honour of um, introducing Dean. Um, Dean's a good friend of mine, he, and he has prepared the word for today. Um, so yeah, I really hope you guys get a lot out of his message. Um, that's all from me. I'm um, praying for you guys, and I hope you're keeping safe. Um, without further ado, here is Dean. One, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Fam. My name is Dean, for those who don't know me, I'm one of the young adults of this community and um, it's just such a privilege and a blessing to be able to bring this message to you tonight. I hope you're all safe and well with your families listening and tuning in from wherever you are in your households. Uh, I'm coming to you live from my bedroom and um, yeah, before I get any further, let's just pray and let's commit this light to the Lord. Father, I just thank you so much for community. Even though we can't be with each other physically, I thank you that we can still gather, Lord, that it's not going to stop us from being one body in unison, pursuing you, Lord. And I just pray right now, Lord, would you just humble me and use me, Lord. I just surrender myself and pray, would you speak your words to encourage your church through me, Father. I just commit this night to you, commit these words to you, Lord, and all the things that are in my mind which I want to speak out, Lord. And I just pray, would you bless us, would you encourage us in this time of isolation, and um, be with us. We thank you, Lord. We honour you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's kind of weird being in isolation, to be honest. Um, I'm sure all the introverts at home are like, woo, we got this sorted, like all 
the extroverts such as myself are having a, um, a bit more of a difficult time. But um, one way or another, it's an interesting time, I think. It's a time of reflection when you are forced to do something that's not normal. You know, when, when, when we gather together, we, we know how it's supposed to go. You know, we know we have our, you know, our small talk and our pleasantries and we sit down and we have the message and we have worship and everything's structured. And then everything that we know to be church just gets taken out from underneath us and we're not sure what to do. And in this time when a lot of our, our faiths are tested, um, I just really implore you and, and hope and pray for all you, my brothers and sisters, that um, this pushes you closer to the Lord that this reveals how your real personal life with him is going and whether that is a good thing or a bad thing in your eyes, I hope either way that it, was enc- it would encourage you that there's so much more that we can be pressing into and that there's nothing out there in the world that can happen to us that can take away or affect our relationship with Christ. Because I've had some really interesting conversations with some of you guys and they've been like, you know, how are you going with church community and you know, oh, like you haven't seen anyone. And to be honest, it's just the same for me. I'm like, nothing's really changed. It's still my own personal relationship with God. Every day when I wake up, it's me and him. It's me talking with him. It's praying with him. It's spending time in his word. It's spending time in personal worship. Even as a family, we've been gathering together on Sunday mornings in the front room and, 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 and sharing a word and doing worship. And, and it doesn't change for me, not gathering, which is a strange thing to say. But it is a community basing in the word we're commanded, we're encouraged to gather as one body and gather in community. And it's weird when you take that aspect out, but then it's also weird when that is everybody's faith. For some people, uh, that can be a big problem. And I think in this time, it's really encouraging to go back to the word and say, well, well surely we're not the first ones to encounter this. So, so what do we do about it? How can we move forward? How can we have joy and hope? And all these different things in the midst of what seems like such turmoil. So it's fitting, I think, that the young adults at the moment have just started going through the book of Acts. My first time booking onto Zoom last week and trying to work it out with like, you know, the 30 of you which were there, which was awesome and phenomenal to see and talk to you guys again. Um, And Acts is one of my favorite books. It is beyond incredible. Luke and Acts, my favorite gospel and and book, is right in it. It picks up right where Luke uh, leaves off. And it's just a crazy time because Jesus has left, his spirit has come, he's um, promised the Holy Spirit, and then for us to go and to be his witnesses to Judea, Samaria, and all the ends of the world, which was their town, the neighboring town, and as far as we can, north, south, east, and west, until every tongue will confess, every knee will bow. And it's just crazy that the Great Commission and those things are still in effect today, and if anything, what we're experiencing right now actually reminds me of the early church. It reminds me of Acts that we're going through. Um, When you read read in Acts, you know, they they gathered together in community, in houses. I know that we can't physically because of social isolation, and and it's a good thing that we should honour leadership and honour those in power and authority, especially our Christian leaders um, uh, who are looking after this nation, but to gather together as we are online in our houses, you know, and how this will even look when everything and all the restrictions are taking off and we can gather again. Because for them it was essential. They gathered in the temples. They they had corporate prayer, corporate worship, corporate gatherings and meals like, like we all do. But for them it was a lot more than that. It was every single day almost living in unison with each other. Some of them, they went to some extremes. They even, you know, sold everything they had and gave to those in need in their community. And I just, I read the things in the book of Acts and it gets me so encouraged because like the book of Acts is us. We're the continuation of that. Um, You know, like Acts didn't finish with them. We're the continuation. And it's really interesting to see because in the book of Acts and what we're seeing at the moment, I know a lot of people can see it as a negative and it's it's a bad thing and it's hard and it's difficult and it is all those things. But I think also it's an amazing opportunity and we should be encouraged in the midst of it. Um, the fact that God is making us all, or a lot of us, rest, be still and know that I am God. And to not have to worry about all these things. And yes, we have human concerns, people don't know how to pay bills and all these different things, but... This challenges me, and I want to challenge you. There was this quote that I found by John Bloom, 
and it says, Learning to rest in the promises of God often occurs in the crucible of wrestling with unbelief. I'm going to say that one more time. Learning to rest in the promises of God often occurs in the crucible of wrestling with unbelief. So how I worded that in my mind and what I think it is, is um, to actually find that rest in his promises, who he says he is, what he's written to us, the things that he's declared over us, is a wrestling with unbelief. Because if, if God's, you know, says he's Jehovah Jireh, our provider, am I actually going to believe that he is who he says he is and he is who he claims to be and actually live out of that? Because there's one thing to like understand it and there's one thing to another thing to actually understand it in our spirit and say, this truth is going to change the way that I live my entire life. Um, uh, I hope none of you can, uh, yeah, I hope, I hope none of you can um, relate to me, but I, I got made redundant um, on the 20th of March, actually, a few days before my birthday. So I've been out of a job for about a month now. But I've been so encouraged and so fulfilled and so uplifted in my spirit that I'm not worried. I mean, I'm thankful that I get to live with my parents still. But in the circumstance that I'm in, to actually say no. No, I'm not going to just whinge to God and complain about how big my, my problem seemingly is. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to remind my problem who my king is. Because I've got to tell you, church, God is still on the throne. He is still the Lord of all. He is still the one in charge of everything. There is no virus. There is no sickness. There is no world leader that is above him. He is the ruling Lord and authority over everything. And begs the question, are we going to live our lives like we actually believe that? It's challenging. It's confronting. I know, but it's, it's refining. To actually step out in belief. And it says there, you know, to wrestle with unbelief. So for me to actually reprogram my mind to say, no, I believe that he is and I'm going to walk in that. I'm more expectant and excited for what's to come. He's going to get me a better job with a better company, with a better income. And he's put so many things in place to take care of me during this time. And I think it's just an incredible season we have right now. Whether you've lost your job like me or you're still working, to just take a few steps back, to relax, to press in. You know, there's been such a charge on my spirit to God being like, I want people to just like retract and spend time with me. And I want to encourage you, how much time are we spending with God? I mean, we have all, some of us, you know, students especially, we have online classes now. <laughs> I mean, as if you weren't even going to students to begin with. But anyway, like, you have so much time. Are you using that to catch up on those seasons you missed on Netflix? or to watch those movies you've always wanted to, or to play with your friends on, on, online, playing games? Or has there been a quietening in your spirit? Being like, no, I just want to go into my bedroom. I want to close that door, and I want to pray. I want to spend this time in worship. I want to spend this time with the King. And look, we're not perfect at it. <laughs> Neither am I. I mean, but I think even if we fumble forward, even if we just spend two more minutes in our Bible than we would have, God smiles so much that his heart is so encouraged as people want to take this time that has now been given to them and invest it into him. Because I, I promise you one thing, time truly invested in the kingdom is not time waste. It's not time wasted at all. Um, and with that, I think it's really shown people kind of a more true colors of, of kind of like a heart check of where their relationship is at with Jesus. Whoa, was I becoming complacent and now that now that Sunday morning's taken away and all these things taken away, you know, who am I if I'm not, you know, rooted in the ministry? Who am I if I'm not Dean the Youth Leader or if I'm not up on stage on worship or if I'm not on welcoming or whatever ministry you may serve in, whatever role or aspect you may have, I'm just a participant on a screen now. What does that mean for me? And I want to remind you that our identity is found in Christ and Christ alone. And just because you're not doing something, God doesn't care so much about what you're doing. It's about who you are and who you're being and who you know you am to be in him and him and you. And that's such a powerful thing in this time, especially. Um, especially in these times. So, one thing I want to say and I want to implore you is have faith. Take heart. 
take courage. In fact, it's, it's ordained times, these are, I believe. Um, but it's hanging on your response. See, in life, all these things can happen to us, and a lot of them we're not in control of. I wasn't in control of me losing my job, but I am in control of how I react to that. And I can react with disbelief, with doubt, with unbelief, with, with, my, with my, my, my anger, and my distaste being, Lord, why did I lose my job? I don't understand. Blah, 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 and start arguing and be angry and it can change my spirit. Or I can go, no. I don't choose to let my current circumstance define my relationship with him. And Lord, I'm going to speak into these dry bones and I'm going to see you bring life into them. Lord, I thank you that whether I kept my job or lost my job, it was up to you. And you have better things for me. So I want to encourage you how are you responding in this time? How are you waiting in this time? There's so many scriptures on waiting on the Lord because he waits on us. You know, and there's this, there's this quote where it says, you know, praise him in the corridor before he opens the door. You know, because there's so many seasons and doors that God opens, but are we going to be dissatisfied in that corridor before we get to the blessing? Or when it comes, or when it comes, is it not going to change because we're going to, we've already been praising him before and after. If that makes sense. Like I really encourage us to use this time and some of us are just waiting we're just holding on lord just just when can society go back to normal when can i get my job again when can all these things that i'd been in control of and i was you know grooming in my life and you know ticking off everything when can all of this just go back to normal and i want to encourage you don't miss what this season could be focusing on what is down the track don't miss this. This is a significant moment God's doing around the world globally where he's stripping away the corporate. He's stripping away the buildings. He's stripping away the stage. He's stripping away the lights. And he's saying, if my people will gather with my word, humble themselves and pray, that's a powerful thing. And I don't want us to miss that as a church, as a young adults community. That's what we are. The body of Christ is on a building. We are the building. It says where the new tabernacle, his spirit now dwells in us. And where two or more gather, my spirit is there amongst them. So as we gather right now, the Holy Spirit is here just as much as he is in any building or, or massive, a massive gathering somewhere. So I want to encourage you that these are significant times. So what does this mean for us? I want you to be encouraged. Trust God that he is who he says he is. And if you don't know who he says he is, go and find out. Read your word. Spend time with him. Try to press in a bit more into this time in prayer, in worship, in reading your word, in spending that quality time with him because he wants to speak to us in this season of, of withdrawal, shall we say. Um, don't give up on community. Gather like this. Know that wherever we gather, his spirit is there. It's only in the building because we gather in the building. So we can have a digital building. So take heart and take faith and take courage that this is his community. And he's given us a tool to be able to gather without being in the same physical location. And lastly, just like the book of Acts, take heart, be encouraged. These are amazing times. It's not the worst to come, it's the best to come. Tell God about your circumstances, sure. But don't, don't forget to remind your circumstances of the God that we serve. Declare things over yourself. Encourage yourself. Speak into dry places and bring forth new life. It's what we've been commanded to do. It is what has been in placed inside of us. Um, I hope you continue on at home in isolation, staying safe, um, doing all the things we need to do, and taking heart that just because what we know to be church has stopped, it doesn't. We are the church, all of us together. Um, and nothing can ever stop that. I love you guys. I miss being with you in person, but I pray with your spirit to be encouraged by anything that I've said tonight and that he has said. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for what you've done, what you've spoken. If in my uh, hum humanness, Lord, and my failures, I just pray would something getting through have gotten through to somebody, Lord. I thank you for what you've deposited in us. 
the times you want to have with us, that you would encourage us in these times, that um, you are still on the throne. That's never going to change. You are the God of all creation. You are Yahweh Elohim, the beginning and the end. Father, we give you praise and honor and glory, and we just worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Love you guys. Stay safe. Tune into the next wine wine. Oh. We're just wandering around asking people questions about their beliefs. <laughs> no, I don't believe in God. I believe in evolution. Probably, maybe there's God, I don't know, but I'm never going to know it until I die. So in matters of faith, is there some way to know what truth is and what is just someone's opinion? When I was a Muslim, I always wondered what God is like, you know, what He wants from us. And I never had any supernatural experiences from God. There is no uh, God we believe in in Buddhism. Hinduism believes we have to avoid the cycle of birth and attain the moksha, attain the salvation. I'm a nurse and I have been always skeptical about God physically healing people. Excuse me, mate. Oh, I seem to be a bit lost. Can you tell me if I'm on the right path to the top of the mountain? Uh, of course it's the right path. All roads lead up to the mountain. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't need that. <sighs> Search to Find is an eight-week course that includes a variety of real stories, mini dramas, short presentations, and a chance for discussion and self-discovery. I was born in India. I was born to a Hindu family and quite an orthodox Brahmin family. At the age of 16, I was actually introduced to the drug ice. And, um, and I, I struggled with the you know, drug addiction and alcohol right through um, my working life. I suffered from terrible nightmares. I was exposed to horror movies at a really young age. Search to Find is more than presentations and listening to other people's stories. It's about your story and your journey. So whether you're curious or skeptical, come along to the first introductory session and you decide if you'd like to continue.